living way. Oh God, we just pour out our lives in reverence and awe this morning at the price that you were willing to pay that we could come to the Father. And so this morning, Lord, we just lay ourselves down with hearts open and ready to receive your word. And we thank you for this precious gift, Jesus, a gift that no one can measure, Lord, but you. Thank you that you counted it all joy for the joy that was set before you, Lord, to give up your life for us. We honour you. We praise you this morning, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glorify your name this morning, Lord God Almighty. We honor you, Jehovah, King of glory. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice, Lord, that you made for me and for us and for every one of us, our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We lift your name on high and we exhort your powerful, loving name. Thank you for taking us in, O oh God Almighty. We are here to acknowledge that yet, Lord, we were stricken, but yet, Lord, you gave us life. Today, Lord, we are here. We are whole and we are alive this morning, my God. Thank you for transferring your life onto us, Lord, that today we can rise up and we can be whole again, my God, for this sacrifice alone. Today we are living. Today we are who we are. Lord, today we are victorious in you, Jesus. I also want to read just one word also in the book of uh, Isaiah 53, just in that mode of prayer, just whenever you are in that mode of prayer, as you reflect upon yourself and just what the Lord has done for you on what Christ has done for us, just in that mode of prayer. I want to read Isaiah 53 and verse number four, by the grace of God. And the Bible says, Isaiah 53 and verse number four, that surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that, were, that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. This morning, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we acknowledge of you. We receive your word, Lord. We are convicted and believe in you, my Father, that you took our possession, you took our iniquities, you took all that was for us, our God. You took it all upon yourself, took it up onto, your, onto yourself on the cross of Calvary. And on that one moment, my Father, our lives were transformed and there we received life now and forevermore. We thank you for the shed blood that you shed our Lord and our God that we could be who we are today, my Father. Today we confess you. Today we acknowledge you. Today we lift your name on high. We are here to exhort you, Jesus. You are enthroned in this place today. You are enthroned this morning, our God. As we rise up early in the morning and late in the evening, from wherever we are calling from, enthrone the name of Jesus in your life. Let nothing else and nobody else be enthroned in your life. If there are things and anything else that took preeminence in your lives, today we want to shut them down and we want to let Jesus take his role take his position in our lives. He is highly exalted. Him alone, we enthrone this morning. Jesus, we enthrone you. You who could take our sins, cleanse our transgressions, carry us through my God. Who can? Who, who else can take your position? Who can be comparable to you this morning? We are here, Jehovah, to claim and to proclaim that indeed you are our Lord. For us this morning, you are our Lord and you are our Savior. You saved us, oh Lord God Almighty, from this this emptiness of our lives, my Father. Today we, we proclaim you are alive that you gave us is within us this morning. And by that life, here we are, our Lord and our God. We lift you on high. We honor and adore you. We praise your name, our God. There is none like unto you, Jehovah. Take your place in our lives. Take your place in our families. Take your place in the body, the church that you came to die for. We enthrone you, Jesus, this morning. We lift you on high. We glorify you today, my God. And declare, because you revered, we are alive this morning. Alive in you, Christ Jesus. To 
to live now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. We exhort you. We love you. We adore you. We honor you. Take your position in our lives in the name of Jesus. There is none like unto you, Jehovah. Hallelujah, Hosanna. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to receive honor. Adoration is for you, my God, now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church of God today, we are privileged to be who we are today. And it is because someone stood up and took our position as we have been encouraged that he went ahead of us and he gave, he became that flow of blood. He took our position and this morning we are who we are. We are the church, we are privileged. Thank you all for joining in and for coming in this morning. It is by the power of that name that today we are who we are and that we are here. We are here through revelation. There is none of us who is here out of revelation. Otherwise, without revelation, we would not be here. What revelation is this? It is about our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one we have enthroned, we are enthroning this morning. And by the power of that name, let us join together, gather around this altar this morning and break bread in the name of Jesus. And without taking much time, today we are privileged to have one of us, as always, as the Lord has gifted us, has put us together. And we have one of us in our midst who is just going to take us through what Jesus just took for us. I don't want to preempt what is in the spirit today, but we know that the Lord is in our midst so powerfully and we wanna give her the opportunity to release what is in her spirit, which is for you and for me in the name of Jesus. And as we started sharing about communion, about Jesus, the blood of Jesus, let us just hear what he is speaking to our hearts this morning. And I know that we shall be encouraged so powerfully this morning to the glory of our name. So in our midst, we have our sister Freshia. Our sister Freshia has been one of us for a long time. She is in the house today. She's been in the house all along, but today she is coming in to take us through the next few moments. Just ask the spirit of God who lead you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word that you have read in store for us this morning. Lord God Almighty, we surrender the speaker before you this morning, our God. And we pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit to rest upon her, to deliver your word upon all our hearts this morning, Lord. Speak, for we are waiting to receive you in the name of Jesus. Not only we receive the word. We receive you, Jesus. You are the word we are receiving this morning in the name of Jesus. Break this word into our spirit and this let this word, mighty God, bring transformation and impact in our lives now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. And we shall hand over to our sister Frisia by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Morning, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Julia, and uh, everyone who has zoomed in this morning to hear of the Lord. It is such a privilege uh, to be speaking to you, mighty women of God. And uh, I believe that uh, this is a God-given moment for us to receive of the Lord. And without just wasting any more moment, I just want to go through what God has put in my heart to share with you. Uh, and like Pastor Julia has said, we are talking about communion this morning. Uh, I'm not a Bible scholar or a theologian, but I'm truly going to share with you the revelation that God has put in my heart. A revelation that I didn't hear anybody talk about, a revelation that uh, I didn't read about, but a revelation from the Lord himself. Just like Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that he gives them what the Lord handed over to him. It is with the same concept and in the same spirit that I'm speaking to you this morning, because what I'm going to speak to you, it is what the Lord himself has revealed to me through the ears. And I'll speak to you in form of a testimony because I'm talking of my own experience, how, the, how I've worked with the Lord through the power of communion. And I pray and hope that the end of this uh, session, that uh, God word will have come to you with power and clarity and you take hold of communion and know that uh, this is a tool that God has given us. And like one speaker has said, that in these last days, communion is going to be a medium by which God is going to reveal himself to the believers. 
So this is so crucial that we all know what it is to walk in the power of communion. I'll start by saying that uh, it was about five years ago that uh, God revealed himself to me through the power of communion. And it was one day that we were attending a conference somewhere, a conference that was organized by uh, people from Zimbabwe. And uh, I happened to know the organizer. And uh, uh, me and my husband used to attend that conference every year. And that morning when I turned up for the conference, uh, I was just a little bit ahead of time. And uh, because it was a big, big, big conference, there was so much to be done. So I asked the person who was organizing if there was anything I could do to help out. And uh, she just uh, gave me a few chores to do as we waited for the um, conference to start. And I did all what uh, she had asked me to do. And then I sat down, but still the, uh, the uh, conference had not started. So I went back to her again and asked her, was there anything else I could help? And she told me, Frasia, do you mind taking the communion cups for last after communion? And I said, yeah, I'll do that. Then we sat down and exactly half an hour, just about half an hour into the conference, I got a pain which I didn't know where it was coming from. Pain, pain, pain on one of my tooth. And it was so, so, so severe that I felt I could not stay in that conference. I tried what, and the pain was just so massive. I just decided, you know, within myself, I'm just going to take the things and leave. And then just then, it dawned to me that I'm the one who is taking the cups uh, from people after they have had communion. And I wondered, God, who do I give this assignment? And uh, in that conference, because like I said, it was from people from Zimbabwe, I didn't know anybody else other than the lady who was organizing. And I wondered, who am I going to tell to take the cups now? Then I say to myself, what about God gives me just the grace to wait until the communion is given? And then after communion, I'll just pick the cups and I'll take my bags and leave. And I settled that within myself. And uh, the routine was, uh, would have or we would break bread before the ministry of the word. So I knew somewhere, before the word comes, we are going to have communion. And I knew that was my moment to leave and go. That week, I was reading from the book of Kings, um, Second Kings from chapter 13, from verse 20. It talks, this is a familiar story. It talks about a time in Israel when the Israelites were going to bury a dead man, and they had behind them a group of raiders that were, were following them. And they were looking for where to put this dead body. And they saw the grave of Elisha, and they threw the dead man in there. And the scripture says that when his body came into contact with the bones of Elisha, he stood upright on his feet. And though I had read that scripture many times, but that particular week, it just stuck with me. And I kept on wondering how anointed was this man of God that even in the grave, his bones were speaking life. I could not go over it that week. At that moment, as I was seated there, this story came life to me. And I started wading, uh, you know, through it in my head. And just then, the announcement for communion came through. And the speaker told people to prepare themselves to receive of the Lord's table. At this time, I'm just thinking about this uh, whole scenario of this man coming to life because his uh, body had come into contact with the bones of Elisha. And just then, it's like the spirit of God came upon me. And I heard a voice asking me, who is bigger, me or Elisha? At that moment, I realized the Lord is asking me in form of communion, in form of that body that I was about to receive. And when I fathomed over those words, 
I heard the Lord clearly ask me, if this man would come to life because his body has come into contact with the righteous, you know, with the bones of a righteous man, how much more, how much more when your body comes into contact with my body? The moment that revelation landed on me, I knew without a shadow of doubt, this is my divine moment to receive the healing. And so when the communion started, this word is going through me in my head, in my heart. And just suddenly, I felt like I'll just leap forward to go and take the communion before it got to me. Because revelation had already come, and I knew without a shadow of doubt that this was healing that Christ was talking to me about. So as I waited on my um, row for the communion to start, and the, came, the bread came and the wine came, I want to tell you that as soon as the bread and the wine hit my mouth, immediately like an electric current going through me, that pain went absolutely that very moment. And, you know, though it was a conference, I felt within me, God, if there was a chance for me to give a testimony, I would not have left without this testimony because I knew this was so huge. I had not experienced that before. And from my background as a Presbyterian, I didn't know anything about communion. I knew that I was just taking communion as what, you know, were told as often as possible, but I didn't know what else it could do for me. But that very moment when that revelation came, I knew that this is a breakthrough. This is a breakthrough to know what it is to design the body of Jesus Christ. To design, like our pastor has said, that he was beaten, that we may be made whole. And from that moment, I knew that communion was the transaction that we needed for our infirmities, for our sicknesses, for everything that the enemy would bring our way. When I had that communion, little did I know that this was like a shadow of what was to come because something bigger than that toothache was awaiting me, but I didn't know. It was much, much, much later that I came to know that was why God had revealed himself to me during that morning. So <clears throat> months after that session, I became so, so, so unwell, so unwell. It was hardened what looked to me like a death certificate. And so I'll not go into the depth of the illness and all that came around. All I would tell you was it was communion. It was communion that took me out of the woods. So, during those days that I became unwell, I used to go for long, long, long walks in the morning. And it was during one of the walks that I heard the Lord clearly tell me. Because after the first instance, I didn't know that I could give communion to myself. I didn't know uh, what else I could do with this communion. But it's during this second time that I became unwell that I heard the Lord clearly tell me, take communion. Start taking communion. And within me, I was, Lord, how am I going to take communion? And I was so desperate, so desperate to know what was going to help me out of the situation that I was in. And I was going to try anything, anything that would get me out of that diagnosis. And when I came back home, 
I sat my husband down and I told him, I hear the Lord telling me, take communion. But I told him, look, I don't want you to take communion uh, so that you may sympathize with me out of sympathy. But if God gives you a revelation, you can take the communion with me. But until then, I'm on it from this moment. But even as I was speaking to him, I didn't know how I was going to have it or how to go about it. But I said to myself, God, if this is you who is speaking through me, I want you to show me the way. So that evening, as I sat uh, down, I was just so anxious in my heart, not because of communion or anything, but I had such a huge thing ahead of me. I had a young family. I didn't know even how I was going to start with this. And I didn't know how to handle things. And I, my heart was so disturbed. So I just uh, thought within me, let me just look for something that could calm my spirit. And I went onto the YouTube and out of nowhere, I typed on my screen, Joseph Prince. I had not heard about Joseph Prince before. I, had not, I didn't know even anything much about him, but I just typed Joseph Prince. And what came on the screen was a confirmation that this was God speaking to me and leading me every step of the way. Because below his name, it was written, in your dark hour, bring out your wine and bread. And I knew who was talking about communion. And that was another divining moment for me. So I sat down and listened to him, his teaching about communion. And at the end of that, another speaker came up, a man that I followed for, for a fairly long time uh, from that time. And him too was talking about communion and how, uh, uh, you know, and he was, would guide you into taking communion with him there uh, through the, 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 the channel. And so from that moment, I thought every time, every morning, I'd wake up and get the clip on and I'll put it on and I'll take communion with him. And within no time, I started feeling within me that things were shifting in my situation. I started feeling significant change in my health. And I knew this was the power of communion. And as I continued going through my walks, and God every day would give me a word. One day I came back home and I found my husband had prepared the table of communion. And I knew God had convicted his heart. So from that moment, we started taking communion together. And we started going on a journey with the communion. And every time we would come around the Lord's table, I would feel tangible presence of God around us. And it was a moment that I really longed for. Because you can imagine when you are there, you have so much affliction. And when you come around the table of the Lord, I would feel his presence and there's nothing I desired more than the presence of God at that time. And I remembered in those days, one of the days that I became absolutely so unwell, and I was put in uh, an isolation ward because my immunity had dropped so badly because they had started me on treatment and they had reacted so badly to one of the drugs and uh, my immunity was so badly depleted and they feared for me and I was put in an isolation ward. And I had been there for days and uh, no matter what they tried, my immunity would not go, uh, go, go up. And my blood count was just going down and down and down and down. And every day they would take blood and they say, Fresia, we are so sorry. Things are not getting better. But we hope tomorrow 
the count will be better than today. And after being there for several days, one morning, my husband came around and said, we are going to have communion. I told him, let's have communion today. And the doctors had just taken blood that morning. And they had told me, she had come back. The, the doctor had come back and told me, we are very sorry. Even today, the count is still so low. We cannot discharge you. And I told him, doctor, I really want to go home. And she told me, Fresh, I understand your situation, but I tell you, there's no way we can discharge you in this state. And I told her, you know what, today I'm going to go home. And she thought I had gone mad or crazy. Because what was going to what was going to happen for them to discharge me, which miracle would take place to change the count for me to go home. But that morning. When my husband came and I told him, you're going to share communion. I believed with every, every fiber of my being that God was going to, uh, to prove himself strong for me through that communion. So we shared communion together. And immediately, I knew within my spirit and within my body, something has happened. And I called on the nurses and I told them, I would like you to call the doctor. And they said, you know, why, why do you want us to call the doctor? And I said, this is personal. And I think everyone would have a right to speak to the doctor if they want to. So they didn't argue a lot with me, but they went and they um, uh, asked the doctor if she would come back and speak to me. And sure enough, she came. And I told her, I'd like you to repeat my blood count. And she said, Fresh, I cannot repeat. You just done your blood two hours ago. What would make you know this to change? Are you doubting our system? I said, I'm not doubting anything, but I feel something has happened. I feel there's going to be a change. And I would like you to repeat my blood. And she said, no. And I pleaded with her. And then she said, well, I'm just going to talk to the consultant. If the consultant agrees, then we are going to change. I mean, we are going to repeat your blood. And sure, she went and she spoke with the consultant. And she, well, of course the consultant thought, you know, at anybody, I wouldn't blame him or even blame the doctor. Anybody speaking or behaving that way, you think there's something wrong, you know, there's something wrong with them or mentally disturbed or something. Anyway, the doctor just said, the consultant just said, well, if all she wants is to be pricked, you can go and prick her. And, and those are the very words that the, the, this doctor told me uh, that the consultant said. And I said, yeah, I'm happy for you to prick me. So she pricked me and it took away the blood. And I knew she was going to come back. And she told me, Frasia, if there's going to be a change, I'll be back. But if there's no change, which I don't think there will be, we'll see you tomorrow. And I told her, doctor, I'm expecting to see you back. And in the story short, she went and uh, Exactly two hours after the blood was taken, I'm sitting there on my bed and I see her from the corner of the world and I knew she was coming with a different report. And she came and she said, Frasia, we want you to know, the team wants to know what it is that you have done because your blood is not just normal, but above normal for you to be discharged. And I just told her, I didn't tell about communion, but I just said, we have been praying and I know God has intervened. And sure enough, when we took communion, we took communion by faith and we prayed. And in that instant, I was discharged instantly without even a medical summary. I wasn't given a discharge summary, but there was nothing for them to hold me in that hospital bed and I was discharged that moment to await to hear from them. And from that moment, me and communion, we became one. And story short, after not long from that time, though I continued with their treatment, but within a short time, they analyzed me again and it was cleared of 
the disease. And I knew without a shadow of doubt that it was communion that took me out of the woods. And through the years, God has kept on pouring what I would say nuggets one after the other about the power of communion. And listen to in one of the months, I was studying uh, the book of Leviticus. And I was studying about the, 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 the sacrifices that the Israelites were required to give in place there was sin, you know, there was a sacrifice for sin in case there was a thanksgiving, a sacrifice for trespassing. You all know the sacrifices that the Israelites were meant to give. And when I was studying about it, one thing came clear that in all those sacrifices, whoever it is that you are sacrificing for, the, the, the lamb for the sacrifice had to be a one year old and without blemish. And one morning I'm seated on the, uh, on the table having communion. And uh, while I was seated there, I had the revelation come over me that when these people would take the, the lamb for the sacrifice to the priest, one thing that the priest was scru uh, scrutinizing, it is not the person who has brought the sacrifice, but the lamb to be sure it was without blemish, to be sure that this lamb was good enough to stand for you. And what the Lord was showing me or was revealing to me is when we go before him, in form of a sacrifice that you are taking before him, he's not scrutinizing you as a person, but he's scrutinizing what you are bringing before him as a form of intervention for your case. And this, this moment, the Lord was showing you, if you go before him, having a form of communion to intervene for you, and the Lord himself is scrutinizing this communion. This is what I would say a past past test. Because just like uh, Gio said and Julia said, that the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us, the blameless lamp of God, that blood that never, never loses its power. If God looks at that blood, it is a win case for you. Remember the story of the Israelites? That night, that Passover night, remember that night, dreadful night, that the instructions were, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I'll pass you over. I'll pass you over when I see the blood. And so, when you come before God with communion and the Lord himself, God himself, see the blood of his son. Brethren, I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what case is before you. It is a win-win. It is a win-win for you. It is a win-win for you. It is a win-win for you. Most of you who have gone through the teachings of, of the court of heaven, it is the same concept. That you come, when you come to the court of heaven, it is the blood of the lamb that speaks on your behalf. It is the blood of the lamb 
that speaks for you. You don't have to start there yourself. It is the blood that intercedes for you. And I pray this morning that you, when you get hold of this revelation, that you walk with it, you run with it, and you have it speak for you, whatever situation it is. And through the years, what I've learned is the communion is only, not only speaking for you when there is sickness. It is for so, whatsoever situation you are faced with. Personally, I move with communion in my bag. Whenever I encounter a situation, I pull it out. And I say, lamp of God, lamp of God, blameless lamp of God, speak on my behalf. And I'm telling you, there's no incident. I cannot name one when God has led me down through communion. And one thing that the Lord revealed to me, because in that morning when I was speaking to my husband about taking communion, before then, I didn't know that I could take communion on my own. I didn't know the revelation of his word that we, a student of the most high God, God calls us the holy nation, the royal priesthood, me and you. We are the priests of the most holy God. And we don't have to wait for someone to come and give communion to you. You can minister communion to yourself on the strength of God's word that you belong to the loyal priesthood. And so many of us have walked in that ignorance, only thinking that communion can only be given in church. Only a man or woman of God can give you communion. But I want to tell you that communion is there for you. You don't have to wait for anybody. Go before God as the priest of the most high God, because that's what God calls you. That's what God calls you. And you get your liberation there. And from there, <clears throat> just very, very, very recently, I was just studying and uh, like I say that most of the time when I'm on the communion table is when God comes around and gives me a word or a revelation. And it's just one of the morning that God reminded me about the story of Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 20. We remember when Hezekiah was so ill and the word came through prophet Isaiah that uh, he was going to die and not recover from his illness. And we are told that the moment that Isaiah disclosed the news to Hezekiah, Hezekiah faced the wall and he started pleading with God, telling him what he had done and how he had walked righteously before him. In other words, Hezekiah was using this. He was using his righteousness as a medium or as a go-between, he made God as a point of intervention for his case. And God in his power, though he says that our righteousness is like few deluxe. And you know, Hezekiah belonged to the old covenant because Christ had not been revealed by then. So you could imagine how worse it was even for him then that he didn't know even the power of redemption or anything, but was just talking about his own righteousness. The righteousness that the Bible says before him is like filthy lads. But still, God in his own power had Hezekiah and healed him and added him more years. So in the same concept, God was reminding me if Hezekiah would stand before God and claim his righteousness to stand or to speak on behalf, what is it 
that you are bringing God to speak for you? What is it? At that moment, the power of communion again. And I knew God was just telling me, if I go with that communion to speak on my behalf, to speak on my behalf, just like that righteousness that I am, um, the righteousness of Hezekiah that spoke for him that morning or that day, the lamp of God standing there to speak for you, your case is a pass pass. It is a pass pass before the altar of God. And so, through the years, God has kept on renewing me day by day through the communion, walking in the power of communion and not walking in defeat, but knowing, knowing that this is a tool, a spiritual transaction that takes place when you are on that table. When you're on the table of communion, that's the moment that you exchange your brokenness with the wholeness of Christ. It is the moment you exchange what it is missing in you with what is on the communion table. Because like, you know, what it says in the book of Psalms 23, that it prepares a table. That is the table of communion that the Lord prepares for us. And whatever is not in alignment, you find it being aligned on that table for you. And so my prayer for you, my sisters and brothers, is that God will help you to take hold of this revelation and run with it. Run with it. Practice it. Know that it has been given for you, that you may walk in the strength and the might of the finished work of the cross. Because that is all about communion, the finished work of the cross. And I pray that from this moment, you are not going to walk in defeat. Whatever situation it is, bring out your bread and wine and go before the Father, and God will not let you down. I know our time is gone. We may not even be able to take communion together now, but after this, you can prepare the elements and in your own closet or wherever you are, you can partake of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and drink of his cup. And I pray that God will continue revealing himself to you day by day in the mighty name of Jesus. That's all that I could share with you this morning. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. Glory to God. Frasia, one minute. Just bless us this morning as we leave to go on our way and we shall be good to go. Okay. Father, we thank you this morning for bringing us together and to share your word about communion, Jehovah Father. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for that mighty revelation about communion. Yes, Lord God Almighty. We want to thank you, Lord our God, because oh. I know you have revealed this to us, O oh Jehovah. Jesus. By your power, O oh God, our Father, Jesus. that we may take hold of the teaching on communion and to walk in strength in the name of Jesus. and to walk not walk defeated mm -hmm. but to walk through the power of the holy communion that was given for us oh Jehovah God I pray that whoever is listening to this teaching oh Jehovah Father that you run with it mm -hmm. and know that this is our time to walk through the power of your word oh God that you have given us and not walk in defeat anymore. We want to thank you for the finished work of the cross. Thank you for the blood of God. Thank you for the blood that you never lose its power, O Jehovah. And I pray this day, 
whoever we are going to encounter this day, O Jehovah, whoever is ahead of us in the season that is ahead of us, O God, I pray that the blood of Jesus will speak on our behalf, that the blood of Jesus will speak in our homes, that the blood of Jesus will speak in our workplaces, that the blood of Jesus will speak in our life situations from this moment on. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, our time is gone. But as our sister has said, because there is no time, we're just going to activate this grace and this faith by taking the emblems in your time, in your space, because now we just want to have to run with the revelation. And we know that the Lord will do us great. The Lord is transforming us. We, we heard that communion is a spiritual transaction. And something we have heard, and there's no time around me just to say this. Freshia carries communion in her heart bag. In her heart bag, if you go, one thing she said, you'll find communion there. And I thought, Lord, what a revelation. What are the things we carry in our bags? When you have your pocket, those of us who carry bags, and we all carry things, whether we are male or female, we carry, there's something you've got on you. One of them in her bag is communion. I'm charged, we are charged. We are taught, and we thank the Lord for great revelation, for the power of the blood of Jesus that we talk about. Today, our lives will never be the same again. We are taking off in this revelation. We are moving on in this revelation to the glory of God. And whenever the Lord releases us into a revelation, he is up for a mission. And in the name of Jesus, we activate this power to fulfill its role in our lives in the name of Jesus. And we shall never be the same again. Glory to God. We are blessed of the Lord. Thank you, our sister, and all of us. And as usual, we are truly blessed. We are truly taught in this altar. And every day we are growing higher by day and by day. May this grace flow and continue to flow. Let this word go out, not only to us who had it, but to others that surround us. This message will be recorded and passed on to the group. We can go back to that and revisit so that we can also release it and teach others that are around us. It is not only for us, it is for all to hear. We want everybody to receive this. We want everyone and the church to walk in the power of this revelation in the name of Jesus. So God bless you all so much as you partake communion, either now or whenever is suitable for you through the day. We would advocate that we're going to have to share this communion through the day today in the name of Jesus. We shall see you again. Frasia is ministering um, to us from interstate. We give um, God all the glory for the grace of ministry from wherever. It doesn't matter. There is no space in the spiritual. And we give, we thank God for all of us. The Lord is raising mighty, great warriors right here, all of us together in the name of Jesus. So we bless all of us and may it be well with us today. We're going to finish with the grace and then we shall see us again on Wednesday morning by the grace of God. And now may the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Have a good day. We see you again on Wednesday morning. Thank you all and God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.